So in 1996, Nikon came out with arguably the most robust, most durable, the most advanced SLR camera on the market, the Nikon F5. And this has held up even to 2021. Now today, as of October 28th, they're back. A little bit of the DNA of the F5, but of course, with all the latest tech, is the Nikon Z9. Now we're gonna be taking this out through the uh, Drung Bird Park here in Singapore, and also we're gonna go to the dog park and uh, test out some footage with my dog, Praha, running around. This is a first impressions of the camera. This is a pre-production sample. The firmware is not final. You could say the, uh, the physical attributes of the camera are, but inside, things could be tweaked. But with that, let's go inside the bird park, let's get out of the rain, and let's see how the Z9 handles birds, wet weather, and dogs. Let's check it out. All right, so we're gonna go catch these flamingos here. Now, one of the things about the Z9, of course, which does animal tracking, when you set to animal tracking, that also includes birds. So, I think we're gonna need the 500. We're gonna need the 500. All right, so the 70, uh, 200 was a little bit short. So now we're moving over to the uh, 500 f 5.6 with the new FTZ adapter on it. Now, as you can tell, there's no tripod mount on it. It's much more uh, compact. So this 500 should get some really nice shots with the Flamingo. Yes. Got it. All right. Pinpoint. Let's do it. Next location. Woo! Fly, birdie, fly. Fly. <whistles> this is hard. Birding is not easy. So let's talk about some of the standout features on the Z9. First off, you can do up to 20 frames per second shooting in RAW, 30 frames per second shooting in normal JPEG, and 120 frames per second out of 11 megapixel JPEG images. Now, 120 frames per second is basically just taking a still image out of a video, for that matter. Will this be something that people use? It depends on the, the scenario. Sports, wildlife, you need that precise moment. An 11 megapixel image is plenty big enough for publication or for even social media or web for that matter. And one of the great things about the Z9 is there's no mechanical shutter in this camera. It is all electronic shutter. So this is the first we've seen outside the Sigma FP, but the Sigma FP was a different camera. You had a rolling shutter, you had banding, you had all those issues that really would deter someone from an electronic shutter. But with the Z9, you have none of that. As you can tell from some of the images we're showing you here and you'll see it throughout the, this review, there's no distortion, no banding, no warping. Everything is just precise and crisp. So this is something, one of the great attributes of the Z9 that I think we're gonna be seeing in cameras going forward. Also for your SD card folks out there, put them away. CF Express Type B only, or XQD for that matter. But yes, this camera is designed for high speed photography and for video, and an SD card is not gonna cut it in the Z9. So it's time to upgrade. But there are a lot of other options out there. So yes, the cards can be expensive. It is an investment, but you're gonna get that speed of performance you need to maximize the potential of the Z9. Now, in terms of video, you can obviously do 10E up to 8K 30P on this. And you can do N-Log HLG ProRes 422 will be coming very soon on this 4K 120. So, and you also have a lot, you have raw video coming in an update in the future as well. So you have a lot of great attributes to the Z9 when it comes to video. So were people that were complaining about Nikon and saying, hey, look, Nikon's not really known for video at all. That's changed here with the Z9. This is a true hybrid camera system through and through. The autofocusing algorithm has been improved. You have two X-Speed 7 processors inside of this thing now. So you're getting the fastest camera that Nikon has ever made to date. This is the Z9 and we are damn excited to try it out. So as you can tell, I'm wet. We're battling the rain, weather resistant. Let's shoot some images. Now we're in a covered area here at the bird park. There's some birds flying around. I moved on to the 70 to 200 here. So let's uh, see how this works. Eye tracking is fantastic. Wow, very nice. Nice. I mean, obviously this is pre-production. It does lock on pretty good. At times, 
It still hunts a little bit, but this is a lot better than I saw it with the Z7 II and the Z6 II for that matter. So again, pre-production, but when it locks on, it does get the eye of the bird and it's just solid. It's very, like, you have confidence that when you know that this is in focus, you're getting the shot. Wait for these birds to fly if I can capture them. Let's see how much we're gonna get a bird flying here. It's on the top. Lower, lower yourself. Lower down. Lower down. <laughs> okay. So in terms of autofocusing, and what I'm noticing here, again, as I mentioned, pre-production, but. It does seem to hunt a little bit with birds. Obviously, these are moving quite fast. Now, when they're static like this, it's not an issue at all. But when they're in flight, it's having a hard time sometimes detecting them. So this, again, could be pre-production, could just be because of whatever the case may be. Uh, but it is something I'm noticing. It's finding some challenges here with this portion of it. Uh, but again, but when you nail focus, the image is beautiful. It's razor sharp. That's me. I'm trying to get the bird to move. Right? I know you feel me, right? It's really wet today, isn't it? Yeah, I know what you mean. It's really a wet situation. And your friend right there doesn't want to fly for me, so it's making my job a little bit more difficult to review this. Yo, what's up, boys? Oh! Exactly at work. Okay, you're good. So one of the things I realized, of course, is the settings inside the AF system. For the Z9, it is quite advanced. So we reset the camera, we had it to avoid obstacles and things inside the way, and it actually does lock on a lot faster than before. So um, again, there's a lot of uh, nuances of this camera that I think would be quite new for some of the people that are used to using more of the consumer grade uh, Nikon mirrorless Z camera. So, you know, we're learning as we go along until we have the Nikon reps here with us to help us out throughout this. So I am noticing that the hit rate is a bit better now. Um, it is locking on focus a lot faster. I'm using the 500 5.6. I'm going through the, uh, the gate on this a bit. You can see a little bit of that mesh, but he's pretty sharp. I gotta say, these buggies are very comfortable at the drone bird park, but you know what would make them even better? Secret Lab chairs inside. As a matter of fact, this video is brought to you by Secret Lab. Check out the Softweave 2.0 as well as the P Leather 2.0 for the Titan Evo 2022 chairs. There's a variety of different themes. You got Batman, Superman, Harley Quinn, Joker, and so many more. They have the magnetic foam pillow on the back of them as well as the magnetic pads, gel pads for the Titan Evo and better lumbar support. And Secret Lab also even makes desks. For more information, check out secretlab.co. So come over this way, sometimes they, they fly around. As you can tell, I've been here a few times, Zaki. From using an F-mount lens, like the 505.6, versus let's say the 70-200 uh, Z-mount 2.8, the focusing is the same, it's very fast. It's extremely fast. I'll say that the, the Z9, I mean, the image quality coming out of it is beautiful. Even at higher ISO, when you have crank up the shutter speed, the image is clean. And I'm not, of course, I'm looking at JPEGs on the camera right now, but um, I'm really impressed. Now, in terms of the settings inside of this, you have a 3.69 million dot EVF. It's a widescreen EVF. So actually, in a way, it's very different from what we're seeing on other cameras. It almost looks like you're looking at a, uh, a television set in a lot of ways, which is nice because you really see a wider area of, of viewing. And the display in the back of this is a 3.2 inch display. I think it's like about 2 million dots thereabouts. We'll put the exact specs right here below on the screen uh, here. but. It's very uh, clear, very sharp. But the thing about the EVF is don't think 3.69 million dots is low res because it's the optics inside of it that make it really good. As a matter of fact, this rivals some of the 5.76 and even some of the 9 million dot EVFs I've tried on other cameras out there. This is a very good EVF. So much so, this might be one of the top EVFs I've used on a mirrorless camera, even at lower resolution. 
surprising, I know, but you know, that's what happens when you have good glass, good optics, you get very good performance out of this. Um, in terms of the ergonomics, it feels really good in the hands. I mean, there's no issues at all with that. Uh, the weight, yes, this is a beefier camera. And uh, for some that want a smaller camera, you might offer the Z6 II or the Z7 II, but of course you're not gonna get the same performance as you're gonna get there's the Pelican right there, flying, and we just missed him. We just missed him. Damn it. Okay. If you see a Pelican fly, just let me know. I mean, but it doesn't really bother me. And I think with, especially with the video attributes to this camera, the speed and everything involved in it, this size is needed. You need the battery power, you need that heat dissipation inside of it to actually help cool the camera off while you're you know, pushing it to its extremes. So what I'll do right now is, uh, while we're waiting for one of these uh, Pelicans to fly off, is we'll try some 8K video right here, see what it looks like with the 505.6. <laughs> not, your, not your typical video lens, but in wildlife, you wanna get close up, Let's give it a shot, let's see how it goes. Also one of the nice things that uh, Nikon has done with this is they've actually put the record button right here. And it's not usually here like some cameras, but it's right here and it's actually raised. So you're, no, you're gonna know just by touch where the record button is at. So let's go in here. Now we're recording at 8K. Eye tracking is in play. Because we've got two hours and four minutes. It's the H.265 8-bit. Absolutely beautiful. So now we're testing 8K at 25p, so you're actually getting a sense of what it's like now. And as you can tell, it is a very clear image. Um, looks fantastic. And Zach, why don't you walk with me a little bit? See, let's see how the image stabilization is on the Z9. So we're actually on uneven ground here on this ramp area. So you're gonna get a sense of how the stabilization is if you wanna do a walk and talk kind of a thing. But overall, I've been really impressed with the Z9 so far. I have to say that Nikon has really knocked it out of the park with this. I've been very impressed. Now, while the autofocusing when tracking birds is gonna take, as I mentioned, some adjusting and some experience, you know, I've found that, you know, shooting images of Zaki or even birds still, the dynamic range out of these images is fantastic. The sharpness, uh, the focusing is so much faster than the Z7 II uh, and Z6 II that this is a big, big change. Compared to the other two, then, uh, let's say for the Canon R5 or the R3 and the uh, Sony Alpha 1, I would say that Nikon is right there with them now. I think this is a very good competition between these three for some really good autofocusing out there. So there's no more going to be like, well, am I missing something going with one system or the other? I think they're all three really comparable. It just depends what kind of glass you want and the colors that you like and of course just everything else that comes along with it. But I have to say, the Z9 has really, really impressed me. Just saw a Pelican fly off and I missed that shot because I was waiting for so long, but now we're just doing video right here for this case, but it is what it is. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there will be ProRes available on this camera soon after launch, but right now you have HLG and N-Log. And we're actually shooting N-Log right now, H265 10-bit internal at 8K 25P. This is pretty damn impressive for a mirrorless camera system. This is impressive. So we're gonna grade it. You're gonna see the before and after what it looks like on grade. But uh, I gotta tell you, man, this camera is very impressive. And there goes a Pelican right there, what I needed to shoot the entire time. I missed it. But I'm showing you N-Log in 8K. So there you go. Okay, so now we're gonna test some low light performance with this uh, new sensor here. We're uh, actually gonna take some photos of the penguins. And it's pretty dark where we're at. I mean, obviously there's some light in their area here. Here's 10,000. We're gonna go down to the lowest setting here to see how clear, sharp this can be. So we just finished our round here at the Jerome Bird Park. Big thanks to the entire staff and team for allowing us to test drive the Z9 here and for uh, shuttling us around here in the buggy. Now we're gonna go to the dog park with my Roddy Praha. We're gonna see how she is with the Z9. We're gonna track her, some dogs playing around and maybe catching the balls and all that kind of fun stuff. But in terms of battery life, in case you're wondering on this, we've shot thousands of photos here already at the Bird Park. We came in with a full battery and I have still over half a battery left on this camera system. So I don't know exactly what the SEPA rating is on the Z9, but I think they're very conservative on the numbers because this is a powerful beast and the battery life is just, I mean, it's just sipping juice. 
This is really impressive. Anyway, uh, gonna get cleaned up, dried off a little bit, and we'll see you at the dog park. Okay, we're now here at the dog park and we're gonna test animal tracking, 3D tracking and animal tracking with my dog Praha. Now, here's the thing. My dog's a Rottweiler, so predominantly she has black fur, which is very hard for some cameras to track a lot of the times, especially with the shadows of trees and foliage around there. So we're gonna see how well this camera performs in that regard. Also, there's some other dogs around here and they'll be throwing, we'll be throwing around the ball, they'll be chasing each other. So we're gonna see how well this camera performs in situations like this with the 70 to 200 on it, of course, the F2.8, one of the best 70 to 200s I've ever used to date. Let's see how this performs. Got it. Yep. Whoa. With the spit in the mouth. With the spit in the mouth. That's it. Review done. <laughs> well, we know who got exercise today, right, Praha? Yes, indeed. Look at that tongue. Wow. Okay. So final thoughts on the Z9. I think Nagon has knocked it out of the park with this, honestly. Uh, I've used the Z7 II, the Z6 II, and those were very impressive cameras. I love the low ISO performance, the image quality. As I mentioned in a number of my reviews for years, I, f I find that Nikon has some of the best color science out of any mirrorless camera system to date. And it holds true in this. But of course, now you're getting that much better autofocusing. Um, the build quality of the Z9 is just tremendous. As I showed previously compared to the F5, I mean, the F5 in 1996 was, it was something special for the sports camera world. And now in 2021, Nikon is back with the Z9. Some of that DNA is brought into this camera, of course, with all the latest technology. The fact that we can shoot 8K for, I mean, a longer period of time than any other consumer mirrorless camera out there on the market says something. You know, 20 frames, 30 frames, 120 frames per second at 11 megapixels with this camera. I mean, and some of you say, why can't you do more megapixels? Do you need more megapixels at that, at that speed? No, you don't. You're basically taking a still from video at that point in time. And 30 frames at, J, at normal JPEG is great for sports photographers and wildlife photographers that are, if you're you know, shooting for a job and you need to send it over to, over to your editor right away, you don't need RAW. You need a JPEG to send it over, get published, get it out there ASAP on the wire. That's why JPEGs are still very important to this day and age. Now for us hobbyists out there, we like raw, 20 frames is more than adequate. As a matter of fact, you saw a lot of the images we're shooting here today. Of course, I did shoot these in raw, but we can't show them because it's not in Lightroom as of yet. But later on, we will do a, more of a detailed review on this camera, I'll show you the raw images. But I can tell you right now, as you saw, they're spectacular. Paired with a uh, lens like the 70 to 200 f 2.8, the 51.2, and of course the 500 f 5.6. I mean, we're talking some fantastic glass. Paired with the Z9, this is just a beast of a camera. I'm a fan, and I can't wait to get this uh, my hands back on it for a full in-depth review. Anyway, those are my first impressions on the Z9. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Is this a camera you're looking to pick up? Any questions, I'll try to answer them for you. Subscribe, like always, follow us on Facebook. Until the next one, take care.